All right, hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Scribe Slendy and Monty um, from Sugar Bomb, and we're here speaking to Rick. He is the well, Rick. Go ahead and tell us about what you do. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, I'm the U.S. Community Manager for Warhorse Studios, and uh, you know our studio is in the Czech Republic, so I have the opportunity of representing the game in the United States, and I get to do mostly community management, like I was saying, along with. Uh, you know, help with marketing and PR, and uh, we're having a lot of fun and excited for the the release. And just, uh, I can't believe it, under two weeks on the thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 getting very close. I mean, I know we're both excited. Um, a lot of our friends on Twitter are excited, uh, especially uh, Rob at Vault of Daedalus. Um, this wouldn't be happening without him. He introduced uh, us to the game. He's and, the man. Uh, he's yeah, the man. He, he's the man, and he's a mod on the Kingdom Come subreddit now. Apparently, yes, he's, he is. He's pretty diehard. He's a uh... He's a huge medieval lore fan, so when I, I remember him him jumping in the chat years ago, like, "Holy shit, guys! They're making a realistic uh, Holy Roman Empire <laughs> RPG," and we were all like, "Wait, what? What are, what are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, So I mean, uh, <clears throat> you, you know, I've been watching a lot of gameplay for the game over the past few weeks, and um, you know, it it all just looks very good to me, and um, so, so really, the only thing that I think could could hold this game back would be um, if there are bugs. So, so I'm I'm just curious, how is the team, uh, to your knowledge, going about um, smashing out the bugs and QA? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question, and and I love um, hearing these sorts of things because I've seen as well as many have, including our backers who've been able to play the beta. Um, know that our beta, when it released, um, you know, almost two years ago in March, was was truthfully there was it, there was bugs everywhere. And yeah. um, but you know what? It gave, it still gave people an idea of what our game was going to be about. But it was literally just a, just a little taste because we've come so far from then. But you know, now even with people seeing some of our um, you know recent gameplay trailers, know that. You know, we have really come a long way, and our, our QA team has been amazing with optimizing the game. And, you know, we're we're right there. We're launching it on, you know, obviously, you know, on Steam, PC, Xbox, and PS4. And we're going to be continuing, you know, we're going to support this game for a very long time. So yeah. so, so, you know, so the, the game ha- has gone gold, right? It is gold. I mean, yeah, we uh, yeah. already even showed off with the, with the some of the, you know, teasing people with the copies, what the, cop- the box mm-hmm. cover looks like. Well, actually, you're, uh, what, what Monty asked, that leads in perfectly to why, why, what I was going to ask. Um, uh, obviously, the beta came out two years ago. Um, I remember there was some, some alpha footage that had gone out even before that. Um, I was curious, how, other than, you know, obviously just building the game itself, have there been any significant changes to how the game plays or the vision of the game since the Kickstarter, the alpha, the beta? Has there been anything major uh, diverging from what you guys originally planned on? To your knowledge, yeah, you know that that's another good question. The truth be told is no, because you know it's one thing if um, with with Dan Varva that I love was was our creative director, and and for those who don't know, he was also the creator of Mafia One and Two. You know when the story Great was games. in the Republic, yeah, absolutely. Um, is that we've always stuck to the integrity of the game, and we have uh, such a great relationship with our publisher Deep Silver, and they. You know, they they know, and they've uh, we've had this relationship where we've been able to stick to what we want to do, and work together to to make this awesome game called Kingdom Come Deliverance, and it's just it's awesome. So, you know, yeah, have things gotten better since the alpha? We started in you know Sabapesh, and and then we opened it up a little bit in the beta, which was about like one sixth of the map of the final size of the game. Um, we have tweaked things. We've added things in based on fan feedback. One even being the Hellbirds, the spear that we weren't sure we were, if we were going to put it in the game and people were really asking, we added that in. But, you know, that's more of like a, a minor change, right? Um, most of it was polishing it up and adding the features that we already wanted to add in that we weren't able to have the time to add them into the beta because, you know, we have a, a smaller team for the, this, you know, the type of game we're making. And yet at the same time, we stuck to what we've always wanted to do, which is to make a game that's an open world RPG. That's first person. That's realistic. That's very immersive and based on actual history in medieval Bohemia in 1403. And we can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Judging from everything I've seen, I think you've definitely yes. um, nailed all those things. Uh, j- j- just uh, one thing I'm pretty curious about personally is um, the dynamic between uh, Warhorse and 
and Deep Silver and uh, when exactly Deep Silver came into play and um, a- a- and just how they've been since uh, they decided to start publishing the game. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it was probably, man, I'm trying to remember the dates, but it was more towards the, a little bit before the end of 2016, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we've just been working with them, obviously, ever since. And it's, it's just been great that I'm going to events, working with Powers uh, from Deep Sober, who's just done such a good job of helping us set up. And, you know, um, without them, it would be, you know, obviously, we, we wanted to have a publisher. We wanted to get the word out more. And, yeah. you know, we're, they we're a new studio. So, you know, the relationship we have with them is, is great. And going forward, too, we will be talking more about, you know, stuff that we'll be doing after um you know, as far as whether it's DLC or whatever, with yeah. with Deep Silver. Yeah, so, so there there will definitely be post launch content then, correct? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll talk more about it after release, but yes, there will be. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I just out of curiosity related to Deep Silver Publishing, um, were there any other publishers that you could publicly mention or not publicly mention, and just don't name them that uh, that you approached or that approached you, or was Deep Silver kind of the you know hit it out of the park on the first try kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you know what? That's honestly for for me, it's a simple answer because Deep Silver was the you know the guys and gals that we wanted to work with, and it's just oh, so they were your first choice. Well, you know, the, the thing of it is, is you know, you you go with who who you feel like you have the great chemistry with, and honestly, and it who wasn't believes about, in the vision. Uh, yeah, it wasn't about like who are we going to choose. It's just that it worked out with Deep Silver. That's yeah. awesome. Well, they they do have they do have quite a history of putting out RPGs, especially RPGs that are uh, you know, a little bit more out out of the. Uh, regular realm so i mean putting out one of the first realistic medieval rpg seems pretty within pretty within what they would like to do yeah and uh and definitely um D- daniel uh varvara is that how you say his last name and varvara yeah yeah i mean definitely with him coming off mafia 2 which in my opinion is one of the best sto- story driven uh open world games that oh, i've played the story's so um, good. i remember playing yeah. that in middle school just being blown away <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and other people from the two K check team. So I definitely have a very high expectations for this going forward. But um, but but, but my next question, you know, the thing that really strikes me the the most when I watch uh, gameplay of this game is just ha- like how many how many complex systems there seems to be going on at once. And there's just all these different systems from you know the you, you know the reputation with people, the combat, and you know even I saw in the trailer. That was released recently. The the schnapps and uh, and, and whatnot. The, like even there's a a, a mini uh, pickpocketing mini game, yeah. which is which is interesting coming from like a Bethesda uh, standpoint where you just you know you just go in the menu and you press the button. I thought that was really cool. So I'm uh, you know I'm just curious like you know sometimes there's games that like don't have many complex systems and they just do a few really well and then they, you know it turns out well. So you know complexity doesn't always equal you know a good product. So I'm just curious how the team is a uh, gonna balance all these systems and make sure they work together nicely yeah certainly i mean it's it's a really interesting approach to our game because we have a lot of different or a good variety of of systems in our crime system too, our stealth system and mechanics and the weather mechanics and even how rain affects your stealth in the game and the noise and everything hitting off full plate armor is going to make more noise right so much detail there there is a lot of detail and it, it makes it there's a lot more, and I'm not an expert with coding. I mean, mm-hmm. anytime someone asks me about coding, I just say I know how to put in cheat codes like Contra or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's I all you need. Either. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah, that's all you need. But, you know, um, even the crime system, like going back to that, it's very in-depth. And we have a living world, right? So, you know, I can't wait for some of these guys and gals when they're doing their streams and think it's going to be really easy to steal loot. <laughs> their reputation yeah. word travel. So, and, and, and it's like, you know, no, we're not going to have guards come out of nowhere. But, you know, like people actually have to go to a guard if, if they feel threatened or whatever and have to tell a guard what's going on. It's people just, you're not going to yeah. see random spawns, but you're going to see an intelligent world. Yeah, that's and something that really are- that's something that really struck me watching the, the, the trailer, the, the Schnapps trailer, what, what was, you know, you can hear the people running to get the guards. And then, and then you know, you can, you know, it's not just the guards are automatically going to find you. You can still, like, hide from the guards and such, which I thought was really cool because, you know, some games... Like they always just find you no matter what. So I thought that was a really nice touch. We um as as far as the uh, the guards go, um, that kind of ties into what I wanted to ask. As far as combat goes, like some of my favorite trailers I've seen are the trailers where they show 
uh, the gentleman in the studio like actually dressing up in the armor and you know testing out the armor and practicing their dueling and whatnot. But um, yeah. how how That's much funny. combat can you expect to find in the game? Is it is it possible is it possible to go through without any combat? Is it a nice fifty fifty mix? About uh, about how often can you expect to you know fight to the death? Yeah, see that this is the great part is you can choose if you want to fight your way through or not and. I would say you could probably get through about 80% of the game, maybe, without fighting. But wow. you could also fight your way through 80% of the game. That's more than I tell you what, you want to talk about a combat system. I mean, we, we use physical collision. Uh, physical that, I love that so much. I was, I was in awe when I watched some of the, the tech they were showing off with that in their trailers. Yeah, I mean, we actually, and you talk about someone dressing up in the armor. I mean, we it was Dan. Dan Barbara put on full plate armor to see how it was. <laughs> our creative director. And, but yeah, we do have professional swordsmen and fencers who actually worked in our mocap studio to show us the actual animations and how you know how they swung the sword or the, the the mace or and how you would react. And with the physical collision system, we calculate how much damage you do based on you know what weapon you have, what type of armor they're wearing, and how hard you actually hit them. So, uh, you, in fact, it's in the penetration and whatnot, depending on armor and, and so on. I, you know what I love is, like, when you're in a, a bigger bigger battle or whatever, and there's guys coming at you, and you're using even your bow, and you hit them, and it, like, in the shoulder, and you see how their shoulder moves back, and how they, they might get tripped up, like, it's 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 insane. Like, even the body parts come into the to play here, because I, I was trying to show off one presentation at PAX, and... I had arrows through both of my freaking hands. I couldn't even hit them. <laughs> I could pick. You know, I mean, yes, you can bandage yourself up, but not during combat. You actually have to leave. And There's like an icon that you're in combat, so you'd have to leave that, the, the scene of combat, to heal yourself. Because we're not, we're not going to allow you to say, time out, let me switch my armor, or time out, let me heal myself. Hold up, guys, have... wait, wait, give me a second. Like, uh, uncle, no. uncle. Yeah. Well, well, well <laughs> right. so if someone has like really like, like heavy plate armor and you shoot an arrow at them, will, will it clank off, or, or like how, how would that work? I mean... Uh, it, it can absolutely, but you know, also at the same time, you will see sometimes that it will still pierce the armor based on uh, you know the strength of how hard you know and the accuracy. So and you know it, it it just it just depends. And the so you'll you'll actually see too, like if you get hit with an arrow, you uh, even if it's like off your chest, you'll see it while you're you know it can be annoying because it'll be stuck on, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean, cool. all this is like. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no. I'll just say, you know, all this probably, you know, blows my mind. And probably Slendy's coming from like, you know, a, a Skyrim perspective, where you know, you shoot an arrow at someone, you know, in in Daedric armor, and it'll just kill them instantly or something. So it's just so I, much I love detail. The realism of it, but that yeah. does lead into um, uh, about about what kind of what's, what kind of scale of combat can we expect? How how big can a battlefield get before the the whole game crashes? How, like NPC wise, what 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 will they populate the big battlefields with? Do you have the number off the top of your head? Can you even say it? You know. I mean, the, the bottom line is it's not necessarily about a certain number. You, you have to make it where you can have it to be, where you can obviously have it manageable, where you can play, and it's not like all, like a, a, a frame rate hell, right? <laughs> right, right, so, you're not playing a slideshow. Yeah, we don't want yeah. Assassin's Creed Unity here. <laughs> the thing, if you guys saw the latest trailer even, we kind of showed like glimpses of, where you can have a decent amount of guys going at it, you know, and... You know, sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see, like, there'll be some bigger fights, that, then it'll lead to a cutscene, or then you'll get to another spot, and a whole bunch of other guys come out. And then you have guys coming from all sorts of different areas, and you're, I'm telling you something, if you're playing this game, and you, all of a sudden it's like, it's just chaotic. It doesn't even start to make sense. And that's how it would happen if you think about... Oh, yeah. Combat, right? And it's, it's just freaking crazy, because... Well, it's not Lord of the Rings where there's one guy tearing through, you know, completely coordinated. It's, you're one <laughs> dude surrounded by a bunch of dudes all trying to kill each other. Yeah. And it's fantastic, and it's like you know you got to pay attention to you know what what kind of because you we will allow you to change your weapon in combat, not your armor. But if if they have if you have a mace and a sword, right, and someone comes at you with full plate armor, you might want to take out that mace because you want you want to bash that armor into them with a mace because you want to have to do more blunt damage, right? If they don't have as much um, armor on, then maybe you're going to want to use your sharper sword because you'll do more damage. So again, it depends on what weapon you have, what they're wearing, how hard you hit them, and where you hit them. Now, are there repercussions for attacking a, a friendly, uh, you know, on accident in the battlefield, you swing the wrong way, you pop one of your buddies? Uh, do, are there repercussions for that, or do they, will they let it slide if it happens just once? Friendly fire is on, so, you know, uh, at the same time, when, there's, when it's really chaotic and stuff like that, you know, you, you got to imagine even, like, you know, it's a video game, right? So we, we try and make it somewhat like you're in a video game, because you can imagine if there's a lot of guys fighting on the screen, 
and how easy it may be to hit someone. Like, what if you have your ball and all of a sudden it's shaking because you have a stamina bar and you start to shake the more the longer you hold it down to try to be accurate. So it's harder and it flings and it shoots one of your guys. Yeah. You're gonna hurt the guy or kill him. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, mean, they're all gonna turn on you somehow and all turn around. Like they don't know. They're all fighting. They can't see yeah. it. <laughs> That's very yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, that really go, goes back to the the whole line between um, realism and fun. Well, like I know the one um, article or preview I saw about the game. I forget where from, but 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 the the, the author was just talking about you, you know how yeah it's very realistic, but it was just you know very frustrating because the combat's you know it's got all these things going on and it's it's it, it's difficult. So I'm just curious, you know, like are you, are you guys like aware that you know the 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 difficulty and the realism's gonna put as many people off as it will probably attract. Yeah, which is I love even this question right here because one of the things that we've showed off but haven't talked about a ton is are the perks you unlock in the game. And yeah. what's really exciting about that is so kind of like Skyrim, you know, what you use is what you level up with, and then you unlock perks even for the different types of weapons you use. And some of these perks might be you'll do more damage if you're outnumbered, um, or you know, you unlock a perk where you can draw blood easier, and if you draw blood easier, then they can bleed out easier, right? And then if then we have another perk that you can com combine with that and say when an enemy bleeds, you're going to get a strength bonus. So we have perks in the game to where you can become a pretty tough dude towards the end to where you're, it's going to be like you'll be able to have more time to block attacks because you'll be more experienced in combat. You'll be able to faint, so you can unlock that skill early on in the game where you can actually kind of strike a different way. Can you... uh? Can, can you just give a quick estimate of how many perks there are? Oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know. There's a, oh, there a of, lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. That's not just for your combat. That's for your speech skills, stealth, intimidation, cool. persuasion. Uh, no, you are got. The, are, are the skills earned through, like, actually doing? So I'm assuming you earn combat skills through fighting or whatnot. It's not just a solid XP bar that fills up. Well, right. Like I said, it even depends on the weapon you use. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's 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 a really it's, we want you to think about everything you do in this game, and and you know we have there's places where you can train in your combat too, and you can make it as hard as you want. You can try and be like Spartacus and try and kill them all, and it's not going to happen because you'll get knocked around like a ping pong ball because it, <laughs> because I said the physical collision like it's awesome. You can literally get hit behind you in the shoulder and it spins you around. Yeah. Uh, it's just freaking crazy. So you know you're going to need to work with your guys. Yeah, the physics, right? Or, or you can try and go and sabotage enemy camps. Maybe you don't want to get into a really hard combat, so yeah. you try and well, go and freeze the enemy's food, you know, things like that. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, that's definitely going to be me, Um, you know, playing on easy and sneaking around because I'm just not good at combat and, you know, easy games. So in this game, I'm going to be dying left and right if I, I charge and <laughs> head first. It's but, okay, Monty. I'll, I'll support you in spirit and then make fun yeah. of you while you, while you yeah. die. Yeah, thanks, John. Got yeah, you yeah, so, yeah. um... So, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but there's a, the, there's what four main skills: strength, agility, vitality, and speech. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. You have strength, vitality, vitality, uh, speech, and then and then. But what's also interesting though is, you, like, with those skills, unlock perks, but they also go hand in hand because if you're talking to like a nobleman, right? Yeah. You could have a high speech skill. But it's not going to take you serious if you're dressed like like a. Just like a town, regular townsfolk. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really cool. The okay, reactivity. that's interesting. So you actually need to dress the part. No, and, like and here's what's cool. You get to a certain part where, like, like we showed in Gamescom, right? There's some footage where you have uh, this guy who owes you some materials and he owes you some cash, right? And you get well, Groshen, and he doesn't want to give them to you. So as you're talking with him, you have choices. You can try and, you know, uh, use your speech skill to talk him out of it. You can try I remember and. Remember this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, impressive. And then you actually can see, like, your stats versus his. However, in the beginning, since it's like, you know, this is in, in your in your hometown Silver Scalus before it's burned to the ground, which that's not a spoiler because it's right in the trailers. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but the thing is, like, you, you might not be able to see his skills in the beginning because it's kind of like a chess game almost. Like, okay, if I use this skill and he has this skill, it doesn't guarantee it's going to work, but it gives you maybe a better chance. But you can unlock a perk in the game that you can re have their stats revealed, so you'll be able to read people much quicker. But what's cool is in the beginning, if you can't, and like you fail, we're gonna give you other ways to try and solve the quest. So maybe you can talk to people in the town about this guy, and then you talk to him again, and then you see some of the stats. So you don't they said the game over bar right there if you do it wrong. No, no, we're gonna we, we give like three to five different ways on some quests to solve, yeah. you know, certain things. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, that that really. Uh, oh, go ahead, John. I, no, no, no. My my question is completely off topic. You keep going. Oh. 
Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, you know, that that, that that's really a sign of um real good RPG de- development, in my opinion, because you know a lot of people really like having to, to you know really think about what they're supposed to do, unlike in some games where you you, you know it's it, it's kind of been a trend towards simplicity, where like you know everything's real straightforward, they they handhold you and whatnot. So I well, I just think it's really to, what to you guys are something we're both pretty familiar with. I mean, look at look at Fallout Four dialogue trees versus New Vegas dialogue trees, where in yeah. New Vegas you have multiple options for everything, and then. Fallout 4, I love the game, but if you break like if you break down the answers for a question, every answer leads to the same dialogue tree and they shoot one you into, yeah. into one solution for everything. Yeah. That's not as yeah. fulfilling. It's, it's, hey, I figured out how to do it this way, and then you ask your buddy, how did yeah. you do it? And it's yeah, yeah, and that's totally why different. I talked to uh, Chris Avalon, you know, the legendary designer behind New Vegas and all that. You know, you know, he really stresses, you know, giving the player as many options to, to go about a quest, and you know, for every type of player, because if you just sure. a- appeal to one type of player, you know, it it, it doesn't it doesn't turn out well. And that's what's cool is that, I mean, there, we have skills, I mean, even for drinking in the game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's I know cool. what I'm picking up, shit. There are perks for <laughs> drinking. There's a perk where you can actually wind up in your house the next day and not know how the hell you got there. Oh, I, here, I can role here play there should be a perk called Dilly Dilly. I can role play as myself, Monty, this is perfect. <laughs> but I, I should say this, though, it's not necessarily your house, you're homeless. I mean, you, your hometown's burned to the ground, but you wake up in like, some place or an inn, right? That kind of help. <laughs> but, well, you know, I, I, for I, alchemy, I, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. I'm assuming if you don't have the perk, you, you might wake up in a in a, uh, in a pigsty or something. It can get pretty bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm having distinct flashbacks to uh, another Deep Silver game, uh, Metro Last Light, where if you drink too much in uh, Venice... You wake up in the uh, you wake up in the pigsty and you like trash the entire bar, and it's it's the the owner's pretty upset with you. And I'm just now I'm, I need to go back and play Metro shit. All right, sorry, off topic. All good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another uh, a cool feature I saw was the the, uh, the the saving by drinking too. That was another cool. Oh feature. really? I, I missed that trailer. Yeah. Yep. Is that yeah, there's there's a few different ways to the well? game. Yeah, I mean, you know, drinking the shaver snobs is one way to save it. But you know, keep in mind, you know, there's there's going to be effects that ha- happen to you when you drink, right? You know, your speech skill won't be as good, you know, obviously. And will, will he actually start slurring when it, in speech? Oh, you'll see. That'll be fun. <laughs> I mean, but bottom line, it's really it's more or less it's more that your skill goes down. But you know, there's certain things that could happen. You'll see. Right. Well, uh, you, you know, another thing that that really sets uh, Kingdom Come apart from a lot of other games, is that, you know, you're just this, like, you know, peasant, basically, and you're not the hero. Like, you know, in all these games, they want to make you the hero. And a lot of people really just want to be a normal guy. So I'm just curious, um, you, you know, why was this direction chosen and was, like, you know, the upper management or the people at Deep Silver, like, supportive of, of, of this decision? Well, yeah, that's, that's a, answer the end of that, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, you know, you have a lot of um, cool, actually really fun games where you can be a lord or a commander of an army or a ki- become mm-hmm. a king. I actually kind of liked in, that in Fable where you could do that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah uh, a lot of people like that. But see, see, the thing is, is we're going more for the, the historical accuracy and realism. Now, yes, Henry is a fictional character, but even though he has a big role to play, he makes, you know, has to make some important decisions, but he, he, he's, he actually starts off as son of a blacksmith and then he has to even learn how to gain the respect of even becoming a soldier. And being a soldier, it was you, you follow and obey, right? Yeah. You follow blindly and obey blindly. And the thing is, is the story itself overall is bigger than Henry. Because history will repeat itself in Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's just up to you how you get there. But Ooh, Henry, that's well, a good line. just be a humble, humble guy. So, um, so, so, uh, so we'll be meeting some of the historical guys, right? Yes, you will. Nice. Yeah, I think our, you, there's a there's like an in-game um, like in-game guide to a lot of the, the nice, historical yeah. characters you run into, right? I think I remember that from a, a trailer. It's fantastic. Like there's the, the codex is really in depth, and if if you're really into, I mean, here's the thing: you don't have to even look at any of it. If you're not into history, no big deal. But if you are even a little bit interested in history, you absolutely love it because it talks about the locations in the game based on what actually happened in these events and things like that, and that. The NPC, there's some NPCs that were actually, you know, real people, and it's it's oh, pretty cool to have that. I'm a history major, so that sounds that sounds like exactly oh, my slice wow. of cake. Yeah, you'll love it. Yeah, um, the no, Kingdom I, Come might be getting taught in university someday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, they do that. They do do that. Uh, 
in Assassin's Creed Origins where they have the tour mode where you can just look around the sites. Maybe maybe they'll use this for historical teaching in a, in a classroom. Um, but I think I think my my last question would have to be um, where exactly does this take place? And remind me because I, I totally forgot what uh, what year does this take place in or what series of years? Yeah. So it, it takes place in, in medieval Bohemia, which is the modern day Czech Republic in 1403, and that's where the Holy Roman Empire was really going on because you, you here, here's what you have going on is you have, um, you know, even again you're Henry, son of a blacksmith. Your your homeland is Bohemia, and you have invading forces of, from Hungary. So you have King Sigismund and uh, his mercenary race, who are the Cumans, and the Cumans have now lived in Hungary for the past 100 years. So they've learned the language and whatnot because they were actually. They're, they're a nomadic tribe, so they were forced out of Asia by the Mongolians. And now they've been with King Sigismund. So they, they raid Silver Scalus, and actually they did in the video game too, which is really cool. And um, it, it, what's interesting is King Sigismund abducts his own half-brother, who's King Wenceslas IV uh, of Bohemia. So he sees a, they call him Sigismund the Red Fox. And his, his, his brother, his half-brother, they call him the Idol King. I mean, he didn't even show up to his own coronation by the Pope. <laughs> That's how, like, he just didn't care. He liked to party hard, and uh, you know he came. You know. When I was when I was in Prague, I went up to uh, I went up to Prague Castle, and I think I rem I think they covered some of that stuff in the because uh, like Prague Castle is not not like a historical site, obviously, but yes. they have they have um, a bunch of they have a bunch of information about about that time period in it, and I think I remember reading about some of this, and they had some cool weapons and suits of armor, so. Oh, that's so cool! After visiting there, and the countryside is so beautiful. I'm really looking forward to actually, you know, get to experience that in the time period in a digital, in a digital world. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so I just have a uh, one last question before we get into Twitter questions. And it's just like, um, it's like a two-part question. Like, like one, are there a lot of unique locations in the game? And two, just how did the team go about creating the world? Um, you know, were his, uh, historians and architects uh, contacted? You know, similar to how Assassin's Creed makes their games. Yeah, no, awesome question. So first off, we have a full-time historian who works in our team, Joanna. Life and yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm just she is just awesome, and she and we have we have full-time sculptors and painters, and even our the music in the game um, is um, well, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, our our music composers Adam and, and Jan Volta. I'm just trying to think of why about uh, the Bohemian Symphony, you know, that we use the music mm -hmm. from. So to give you the medieval music in the game, and we even use Gregorian chant. So when you're in the monasteries inside the churches, you, you hear the monks singing in Gregorian chant. And all this stuff is what helps you get immersed into the game. The locations are very important, too. I mean, I've been to some of these locations in Prague, and you have, you know, the Castle of Rattai in the two parts, the upper part, and then the lower, which is Perkstein Castle. And you can go, like, to actually, like, three to four out of, the, uh, out of the four of these castles in the game. And obviously within these castles are bigger cities. And... It's it's like we've actually reconstructed these castles, okay, wow. to make wow. them look like how they actually looked like back then. I mean, it may not be a one to one on the map, but I kid you not, if if somehow, some way, someone was like reincarnated from that time, they would probably not think many years past if they. Well, I, I mean, if they somehow jumped into the video game or something, I don't know. It just it's just amazing to see the even the artwork and the painting, the digital painting that's put inside the walls and some of these, again, the churches the the castles, the rooms and stuff to, to, to really give you that, you know, a full sense of immersion. And so our full-time historian, you know, we've done hours and hours and hours, including, you know, Dan Varva and Martin Klimar, guys who, you know, a lot of research to be like, you know what, man, I, I'm actually here. Even the vegetation in the game, the trees, they, those are trees from Czech. I mean, uh -huh. I, when, I, when I was in GDC San Francisco and I was showing someone the game, this, this girl's like, those are my trees. That's my grass. Because she, <laughs> she was from the Czech Republic. Wow. So yeah, we've reconstructed towns, cities, castles, you know, to 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 really make it look like you know that's how it looked like back then, and um, it, you know, as much as we could. Now wow. is the is this? I'm just really quickly because I know we got to get moving. But is the um the scale of the map uh, like you know one to one scale of where things would be, or are they kind of compressed down, uh, you know, like Fallout style, just to make sure you get to see everything? Yeah, I mean it's it's compressed a little bit, right? Because you know, it is a video game, and, you know, it, we could have tried to have a lot more, like, land mass, if you will. But then again, it's 
it's it's really you know eerily similar to how it looked back then, but we did compress because again, it's it's a video game, and it's yeah, you know what I Well, you don't want too much filler too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's empty. You space. can only you can only ride a horse through so many fields before you start getting sick of seeing fucking fields. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, is like it's a sixteen kilometer squared map, and and we do. And the thing is, is when you try and compare that to other games, it's like you really can't because it's based on the type of game you make with the engine you use. So it doesn't mean that every game is like a, a like you can compare say, oh, well, this map is this size, so that map's that size, it's that much bigger. Right. Not necessarily true. But the bottom line is it's not about having the biggest map. It's about what you do within that map. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so like, Look at Witcher 3. They have relative, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trigger Monty mentioning that game. But you have you have relative. I love Witcher Three. Oh no, I'm thinking I'm thinking of uh. That's Rob. Rob. Yeah, it's it's you know the maps on their own are, are relatively small compared to some games, but they're so dense with things to see that you really don't you really don't think well this is huge because you can have a huge map and be bored of shit and just fast travel everywhere because there's no point in seeing what's packed into it. So no, I agree. It's definitely more important what you fill it with over you know what's <laughs> how how large is it. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let me go ahead and pull up the Twitter questions, unless you already have them up, Monty. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I have them up. Um, you got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first question comes from um, CJ Treader, two thousand one, and um, well, the first part of his question we already went over about the division, but but the second part he basically wants to know, um, like, how set is the protagonist? Like, you know, how, how much of his background is is fleshed out, and, and um. But like how that affects the the role playing and, and dialogue options. Yeah, that's that's cool. So I mean, in in the beginning of the game, you do get a little background of Henry. I mean, he's kind of an immature, average young male. You know, gets in trouble and you know goes to the pub one too many times, kind of thing. Like you get a little bit of that background, and then you see how he tries. You know, because Henry will mature over the game, over the course of the game, and so we re- really do focus a lot on Henry's character. Um, and that's why, you know, Henry will be Henry, right? I mean, so the the story, although it's bigger than Henry, we focus a lot on him. And, you know, you'll see what happens throughout the game. But, you know, even though, you know, you'll make, you will make choices and stuff, you can kind of, you know, kind of take a different direction with Henry. But not, then again, at the same time, you know, um, just like Geralt and the Witcher, right? Um mm-hmm. Where this, this the story is centered on him, you know, you're always going to play as be Henry, son of a blacksmith, a humble soldier, and yeah. you know, I don't want to, you know, go into like in depth of the story because there's going to be some interesting things that happen in this game where you're going to be like, okay, <laughs> I see why they stuck with Henry, and I, I can't even say anything more than that because it's a really good story and you guys will enjoy it. Yeah, oh, I'm well, excited. Well, that got me pretty excited. Uh, I mean, I, I already was, but I'm a sucker for the story. The story is what keeps me coming back. So, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, like yeah, and I mean. Uh, Oh, go ahead. What are you gonna say? No, no. I was just gonna say. Um, no, no, no. You keep running. You keep running. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was just gonna say one thing. I, I noticed just from this this most recent trailer was just how much the, uh, the how much it seems like like the uh, what's the word? Well, like it just feels so much more cinematic, and you know all the models look look really nice in, in that trailer and the cutscenes. I'm just curious. Did, w- w- was there a big upgrade recently to to that? Well, I mean, you know, some of the the gameplay we showed off was like three to four months old, and okay. you know, even even at, even at like um, PAX, it was, it's not like it's our new it was our newest build, you know. And so, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the the newest gameplay footage you saw, you know, obviously we we it takes time to work on trailers too. It's not like you can just yeah put it together in the course of a day, right? Yep. I mean, you know, you see how long it takes to make a trailer for a movie if they told you even how long that took. Yeah, <laughs> so. Right, and then you, you know the size of our studio and working with Deep Silver, and they help us out a lot with that. But I mean, you're getting a really good idea. Obviously, this last gameplay or this gameplay trailer and the gameplay video, you know how it's going to look. And it's 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 it's, it's go- we've come so long with optimizing the game that you know, uh, especially those who played the beta, will be like, man, this is this is like a different game. Yeah. Um, and and just real quick, what are the specs on consoles? Is is it 30 FPS? So yeah, we we that's what we've targeted for for uh, for consoles. And we don't have a cap for the frame on PC. Fantastic. Okay, nice, nice. And, and so the the next uh, Twitter question comes from at Molto Miller, and uh, he wants to know how do you clean your armor and clothing when it gets bloody during battle, and Ooh. is there any shagging, whatever that means? Well, let's put it this way: <laughs> uh, you, you can go see a tanner to get your clothes cleaned. 
and sometimes you'll find like water buckets where you can kind of like kind of wash up a little bit and here's why it's important because we talked about impression in the game right yeah so imagine walking around town with the common folk and you have armor on that's already intimidating as is and then have blood blood on there they're like <laughs> what the hell man like with the dude you know what are you doing like yeah. a, you know and then you have to also pay attention to if you're going to sneak around you we have what's called your your a rating of, of your conspicuousness so what that means is based on when what, what when someone sees you how they're going to respond to you based on again what you're wearing so if you're like if you have regular townsfolk clothes on and you're sneaking around they're like what are you doing man get lost yeah man that'll probably be probably just uh, such a great moment in the game because for so many people you know they, they'll go kill someone then they'll walk up to combat and they'll be like and the npc will be like oh well you girl bloodied up and they'll be like whoa you actually noticed that like i actually have to <laughs> like get in, that like in dragon age when you when yeah. in dialogue you're covered in blood for like a good five minutes and you're just you know talking to a town so calmly as you're just splattered with gore that always kind of <laughs> weirded me that always weirded me out <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll need to clean up yeah just, just so amazed by the level of detail and um yeah yeah, so uh, one last uh, Twitter question here. We'll probably... You know what? We can do a few more if you want, man. If there's a few oh, more. Oh, okay. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, um, well, I might throw in another question. Then yeah, I might too in but, that case. Yeah, but um, at uh, TW2Brick, he'd like to know how many sli- sa- uh, sli- how many save slots there will be for Xbox, PS4, etc., if different. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've been asked that, you know, actually, I wonder if he was the one who asked me that on Twitter. I can't remember. But, you know what? We'll, we'll just put it this way. is like, the one thing that we we try to ha- be having be avoided is to be able to save it a ton, right? Because we want you to, to you know stick with the decisions you make. So if you don't have the shaver stops, because that's what allows you to, to save the game, right? Yeah. Um, then basically, you know, the only other way you can save the game is if you you know you sleep, or if it's an important part of the story. So, you know. You know, truth, truth be told, like, have I actually went and counted all the save slots? I really haven't. <laughs> but I'll just put it this way is that we're, we, you know, we want you to, to be, you know, live with the choices you make. And, that, and that's, that'll actually add to some replay value because I don't know if you guys knew this, but even the cutscenes, um, not all, you won't be able to experience all the cutscenes in the game because of the choices you make. So you, if you're a completionist, there's a little frustration in there as far as like, you won't be able to do everything in one playthrough. It's just not. It's not possible. Yeah. And, want, and, and there's a, like trophies and achievements that you know probably can't get. Yeah. Nice. Oh, uh, as far as you can't. Yeah. You know yeah. Uh, that'll it'll be interesting. It'll, it'll be interesting. But the replay value will, in my opinion, will be high. Yeah. Well. Well, that's great. That's something you know that really um, affects the, the the life cycle longevity of games like this is the replay value. Absolutely. All righty, well, go ahead and ask your question, because I totally had a great one, and I forgot it, and so now I need to remember it, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, well, um, I I forget who who uh, uh, said this, but it's a question I wanted to know, too. Um, what, like, what game, or a- any sort of franchise, uh, in- you, do you think influenced Kingdom Come the most? Uh, I, I mean, obviously, uh, Sky- Skyrim, it's hard to really talk about RPGs in this day and age without talking about Skyrim, so I'm just curious if that had any effect or what other games ha- had any influence well i could i could pull the the obvious ones and say you know um mafia <laughs> yeah mafia <laughs> and operation flashpoint but just to touch on that again i mean those are definitely like those th- those those two games is what pretty much that's what you get when you put kingdom you know kingdom come deliverance together with those two because yeah. you, well that's you a good pedigree this. itself yeah, and and then you know, um, you know, you have games like uh, you know Oblivion and Fallout, Darklands, you know, Witcher, Dark Souls, uh, Ishar, or however you say that game. You know, th- those are the types. Of, uh, those are some of the inspirations right there. I like the sound of that. That sounds uh, sounds like a good uh, good set of inspirations. Well, because you have a lot of exploring. You have the Dark Souls where there can be you know difficult challenges, or we're not just gonna we're not gonna tell you where to go. You know, you're, you're only going to know where to go is if you, you do your job, which means you got to talk to the right people. you got to investigate. I mean, technically, our game's not a fighting game. You can choose to fight a ton if you want. You can stir up all sorts of crap. But, <laughs> it, you know, if you want to know where to go, you, you can't just piss everyone off. Otherwise, they're not going to tell you. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> you know? yeah, I'm definitely relieved to hear that. I, I, I mean, probably, you know, the best comparison, I mean, I, I know it's, you know, it's probably setting lofty expectations, but it, it's The Witcher 3 because, you know, it's, it's it's a similar situation with, you know, not a huge developer, you know, it's also, you know, um, I think they are in, in Poland, 
you know, so it's somewhat close geographically. So and you know, so hopefully this game does as well as The Witcher Three did. So then you know, you guys will be the next CD Projekt Red. <laughs> hey man, we want to be successful. We want to have a long future and, and, and keep on making games. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and we definitely hope for your success. Thank you. Anyways, I am. Unless you have any more questions, I'm actually going to need to run here in a couple minutes because um, okay. I got a. I only because I got a double shift tomorrow, and I, I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, yeah, you know, well, I think that's a good spot. To, I say spot I, I feel like that's that. pretty good. I, cool. I had questions and I forgot all of them. So, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. uh, also, uh, before we jump back into the dialogue, um, uh, when I when I close you out, Rick, uh, if you want, pitch the retweet thing to win the copy of the Alienware and the um, the game. Um, uh, throw that yeah. in there, and then I'll, I'll add a link to it in the description of the podcast. If you want to, yeah. if you want to shout that out, get some more okay. attention to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we almost broke our Twitter account when we first launched it because it's it's been pretty awesome. So oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. We'll, we'll we'll do an outro real quick here. Uh, you wanna you wanna you wanna push him out? I'll push him out. But you wanna like you know wind, wind him out there, Monty? Yeah. Okay. I, I brought him in. You take him out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's see. Three, two, one. Okay. So that was our talk with um Rick from the Kingdom Come Deliverance team. It was a uh, a pleasure talking to you, Rick. Yeah. yeah thank. You, yeah. And we're all very excited for the game. Uh, can, can you just remind us when it comes out again? Yeah, so it's again, it's coming out for um, Steam, Xbox, and, uh, and PS4 on February 13th. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I wanted to mention, too, is that we just launched a contest today. Um, so if you follow us on, uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, at Warhorse Studios, because, uh, of course, that's the name of the studio. And it, it's you, you, we're actually um, going to give away thanks to Alienware, um, an Alienware Aurora uh, R7, which is an awesome gaming PC, along mm -hmm. with a digital copy of Kingdom Come Deliverance. So make sure you check out the details on our Twitter account. Uh, it's 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 great because we're we're not going to uh, announce a contest win the winner until February 12th, the day before the game. And you know I encourage you guys, you know, check it out. Check us out on uh, you know YouTube with our latest gameplay videos, Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I, I really can, can tell you this much. If you like open-world RPGs and you want to take a break from the fantasy and want something more realistic, this is your game, bottom line. Uh, you know, pay yeah. up. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 Rick, you know, I got a nice uh, dollar bill waiting for you if you want to send me that, uh, that, that Alienware PC. Take a, lot of <laughs> a nice whole dollar bill. <laughs> a lot yeah. of dollar bills. Yeah, yeah, and also just a reminder to follow... Uh, uh, the Sugar Bomb Twitter at SXB Gang, and also uh, stay updated uh, with me at For All Out and, and uh, Scribe Slendy. With me at, at Scribe Slendy. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and this will probably go up on the the Sugar Bomb YouTube channel, and um, which hasn't been very active lately, but this will hopefully jumpstart it. And also visit SugarBomb.com and. Right.